And then I'm gonna hand the mic over to Russell Dyson for the presentation. Russell, I will share a screen and hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Colleen. And uh, Colleen, you can hear my sound? Yeah, it sounds great, thank you. Great, and I'll get you to advance the slides for me. Thank you very much. Welcome everyone. First, I would like to acknowledge this meeting is being hosted virtually on the unceded traditional territory of the Comox First Nation, the traditional keepers of this land. We thank you very much for joining us today for this important update. Initiatives like this can be difficult to summarize. The Liquid Waste Management Plan, or often referred to as the LWMP, for the Comox Valley Sewer Service has been nearly three years in the making. It's been a very complex process. It is a long-term plan for the CVRD, the Town of Comox, City of Courtney, Department of National Defense and Comox First Nations, they are all users of our system, and it will ensure we have a safe wastewater system for decades to come. If you're new to this discussion, welcome. There are some significant updates and next steps that we'll be sharing with you today. If you participated in the liquid waste management planning process at any step, whether it was as a member of the public advisory, to complete an online survey, attend a workshop or open house, write a letter, telephone us and express your opinion. We thank you very much for your participation. These plans are made successful by the participation of the community and we are very grateful for you. It's also a good time to say thank you to our staff who have guided this extensive process and also the technical experts that have supported us along the way. They provided us critical input and direction to inform these important decisions. We look forward to taking questions at the end of this presentation. And again, I encourage you to use the chat format as Colleen explained. We hosted an open house last week and know that there are lots of great questions and comments from the community. We have a great team on the call today. So please make sure the most you make the most of this opportunity and reach out to us with your questions. Certainly the dialogue at our open house was great. I have about 12 slides to walk you through with today to explain the process and some of the components. So let's just dive in. Slide two. A liquid waste management plan or LWPMP is a tool used by local government to plan for the long-term management of wastewater, our sewage. And it is something that a process that is prescribed by the province and the province has a role in, in improving the plan as we move forward. It includes the conveyance infrastructure that collects and moves wastewater to the treatment plant, how we treat that wastewater at our treatment plant, and possible methods of resource recovery, which are the opportunities to capture and reuse resources like heat and water created throughout the process. This plan requires engineering study, environmental assessment, and financial analysis, as well as significant public consultation, including a public and technical advisory committee that represents community interests in the areas that will be impacted by the plan. And they have been critical throughout this process. Slide three. Liquid waste management plans are comprehensive plans that require a vast amount of research, discussion and development. With this timeline, you can get a sense of the work invested in the Comox Valley's liquid waste management plan. As you can see here, we kicked off the process three and a half years ago with the establishment of the committees that would guide it and set the goals for the process. A long list of options for treatment, resource recovery and conveyance were reviewed in early 2019. And a short list was narrowed from that in spring and summer of 2020. Considering the input of technical experts, community representatives and the general public, preferred options were selected by the Sewage Commission in February and July of 2021. Because of the urgent need to proceed with the conveyance upgrades on our system, I'll get to that in more detail a few more slides from now, it was decided to pursue this as a separate process, gaining approval for the borrowing required for the project from the community in the summer of 2021, which allows that construction to proceed. And here we are, the draft LWMP plan is ready to be submitted to the province, which is why we're coming back to you today to wrap up the engagement process and let you know what the next steps will be. Slide number four. Each step of the LWMP process included public engagement opportunities held via in-person open houses, workshops, online surveys, and more. This input along with the assessment of technical experts led to some key decisions being made in three key areas. First, resource recovery. Early assessment of options here led to further planning being deferred. 
Our consultants concluded the only financially feasible option for the use of reclaimed water at this time is within the treatment facility. This is due to a short irrigation season and the very long distances required to convey the reclaimed water to potential customers. A business case for reclaimed water use is being considered through the site master planning process underway at the treatment plant. And further assessment and decisions will be considered by the Sewage Commission in the future as things change. Conveyance. A preferred route was selected to address the urgent need to relocate our current force main from the Balmoral Beach Willamar Bluff area and the estuary. I have more slides on this to come as it's the next piece of work for the CBRD, but I want to include here to show how these decisions all stem from this process. And then the treatment plant. The preferred treatment option selected will continue to see secondary treatment of all flows with added disinfection to achieve recreational standards. Slide five. A long list of four options for the future of wastewater treatment was considered through the LWMP. The preferred option was approved by the Sewage Commission in December of 2020. The preferred option will ensure all effluent passes through secondary treatment as it does currently. Secondary treatment removes 90% of organic material and solids on average and 80 to 95% of microplastics. UV ultraviolet disinfection for all flows will be added as a new component in the treatment process to significantly reduce the level of bacteria and viruses that maybe make their way into the Salish Sea. Upgrades and expansion to existing components will occur over time to increase capacity and comply with regulations. And certainly the master planning process that we're undertaking right now for the treatment plant will help us to establish those processes in the future. Slide number six. With the liquid waste management plan wrapping up, the CBRD is turning to the most urgent next step the Comox Valley Sewer Conveyance Project. The new conveyance project will replace pipes and upgrade the pump stations that move more than 14,000 cubic meters of raw sewage each day to the sewage treatment plant on Brent Road. This is the sewage from municipal residents, as well as the schools, the hospitals, and commercial outlets we all rely on in the Comox Valley. In our case, this conveyance project is urgently needed to protect the beaches and waters throughout the Comox estuary, Point Homes, Goose Spit, as well as Bain Sound, because current force mains run untreated wastewater near or along the foreshore. The new system will route sewer pipes further inland where they will no longer be vulnerable to storm damage by waves, rocks, and logs. Construction is expected to begin in spring of 2023 with completion in the fall of 2024 and we will be working closely with the Comox First Nation to ensure the preservation of archeological sensitive areas. Slide number seven. The route for this conveyance system upgrade was approved in February, 2022. The route begins at the Courtney pump station on the left-hand side of the diagram as I'm seeing it, follows Comox Road through the Comox First Nation, up Comox Hill, and through downtown Comox along Beaufort Avenue and Balmoral Avenue where it reaches Lazo Hill. The pipe will then be tunneled through Lazo Hill and laid overland to the treatment plant. Slide number eight. Diving a little deeper into the northern portion of the route, a new Courtney pump station is required. It will be replaced rather than refurbishing the existing Courtney pump station. And this was selected because the cost of a new facility was the same as renovating the current one which is 40 years old. It offers improved operations and maintenance access for a longer term. It allows the station to be relocated further away from the estuary and protects against rising sea levels, and it will meet modern seismic standards. A section of the pipe has been rerouted from Comox Road because it avoids areas already identified as having intact archeological findings. By moving construction off Comox Road in this area, we can also reduce some of the traffic impacts during construction. We will continue to work with Comox First Nation on the planning work to avoid culturally sensitive areas and impacts to their lands. There is no tunnel through Comox Hill as originally proposed. 
using traditional cut and cover trenching to install the pipe at Comox Hill was selected over tunneling in this area because technical assessment, cost benefit analysis indicated trenching is the better choice given the land elevations. Unlike Lazo Hill, cut and cover is an option for Comox Hill because of its lower elevation. Slide number nine. These show the route details through the town of Comox. Throughout the town, the installation of the works is very challenging and complex. We will have to weave the pipe through existing utilities while attempting to minimize disturbance on the surface and minis minimizing disruption to residents, businesses, and commuters. Some of the components of the current plan show that we are moving the route off Comox Avenue. The pipe will be routed off Comox Avenue between Rodello and Stewart to Beaufort Avenue. Aligning with upgrades, the pipe construction disruption can align with road and utility upgrades planned in this area. The project team will continue working with the town of Comox to synergize with its existing plans. The benefit is minimizing the disruption to residents of Comox and commuters by undertaking projects simultaneously and taking advantage of construction crews being on location. Further details on these upgrades will be confirmed with the public as contracts are awarded and construction planning begins. We are very grateful for town staff that have worked working with us to finalize these details. An upgrade to the Jane Place pump station. Jane Place pump station is what transfers the waste collected from the town of Comox into the conveyance route. In order to serve the revised pumping requirements and ensure it meets current standards, the Jane Place pump station will be extensively upgraded, but will remain within the same footprint it now occupies. We will be working with local residents to gather their input on the look and feel of that pump station. The route to Lazo Road. Lastly, the pipe route will follow along Balmoral Avenue until it reaches the tunnel entry pit at Lazo and Torrance. The project team will work with town staff toward a construction plan that will reduce the impact on traffic flow where possible along this route. Now to slide 10. Zooming in now on the Lazo Hill alignment, this alignment has been selected for a number of reasons, including the path offers a minimum of 20 meters offset from all deep water ground well groundwater wells, a distance recommended by our geotechnical experts. This route impacts fewer private properties. It reduces neighborhood disruption caused by pipe laydown, and it aligns with the plan to eliminate tunneling beneath Lasso Marsh. Slide number 11. To drill at Lasso Hill, we will use a horizontal directional drilling me method, or often referred to as HDD. This series of graphics shows a step-by-step -step process to describe how the drilling will occur as this tunnel pipe is constructed. Starting at the entry where the equipment is set up, a drill creates the first path for the new sewer pipe. This is a narrower tunnel, but establishes the route. Second, at the exit hole, a reamer is pulled back from the pilot bore's exit point to widen the tunnel. A bentonite slurry keeps the hole stable. The assembled pipe is then pulled back through the tunnel that has been created. The bentonite acts as a lubricant and contains, continues to stabilize the hole in the pipe. Slide number 12. We've had a number of meetings and updates for the residents in the Lazo Hill area who naturally have questions and concerns about the impacts from the construction. Based on their feedback and technical assessment, the CBRD has made a number of engineering decisions about the method and materials for the new system that provide additional protection for the environment. Two key decisions include the flow of the pipe and the pipe materials. The line through Lazo Hill will be gravity fed. A gravity fed line means the pipe is not under pressure through this section. This technology virtually eliminates what was already a very low risk of a leak because there's no pressure on the inside of the pipe. The gravity slope allows the route to remain 10 meters above the aquifer, further protecting the water source. And because the pipe has to be strong enough to withstand the stresses of its installation, the pipe strength far exceeds what is required for a zero pressure operational flow. The pipe material will be high density polyethylene, which is a preferable material because it, unlike steel, it doesn't corrode and has much better resistance to erosion. It is more flexible and better suited to withstand seismic activity. 
pipe sections are fused to eliminate all joints, which can be a higher risk of leakage, pipe joints that is. It is more resistant to internal abrasion and has no external coating that could be damaged. All of these factors continue to speak to the concerns we heard from the community about protection of groundwater and the aquifer and risk protection. I am near the end of my presentation and I have just one more slide to present to you, slide 13, lucky 13. Along with a more complete plan comes a more complete timeline for the steps forward in 2022. It will be a busy year of preparation, including this update, as well as engagement on construction planning to come later in the year. Construction is estimated to start in the spring of 2023 and completed in the fall of 2024. We look forward to keeping you informed moving forward and encourage you to continue to be engaged with the project team as we complete planning on this work. Again, I wish to thank you very much for taking the time today to join us. And with that, we'll pass you back to Colleen, who will facilitate the question period. We look forward to answering your questions. And again, thank you. Wonderful, Russell, thank you very much for that overview um, and all that information. Uh, just a reminder for the people who are joining into the webinar, if you came in after I mentioned this, we'll, we will be collecting questions through the Q&A uh, tool, which you can find at the bottom of your Zoom screen, the little icon that has a couple dialogue um, bubbles and Q&A. If you pop that up, you can type in your question and post it. Uh, if you want it to be anonymous, just click the box beside that uh, before you submit it to us and then we will work through the questions as they come in. We had one question pop in during the presentation, uh, Chris, and I'll, and I'll start by throwing this to you. Um, and it's about, it's asking who the approving department or ministry is for a liquid waste management plan. And maybe you can give a bit of information about the timing for submittal on the draft. Sure. Thanks for the question. Uh, so the approving ministry is the Ministry of Environment. Um, and we, our, our current plan is to submit the combined stage one and two plan. Um, in early summer, so early July is what we're tracking right now. Uh, so that's um, so then that would be submitted to, for provincial review and approval, which we understand can take between six to twelve months. Um, at the end of which, we expect to receive a um, a conditional letter of approval. It's, it's quite typical. So the province will, um, after completing their review, will. Um, have a number of kind of pieces of feedback and and um, and conditions upon which they will be approving the plan, uh, and then the next step for the CVRD would then be to draft the the stage three plan, which is basically the details about how we plan to implement the outcomes that were embedded within the stage two plan. Uh, then that would be submitted in um, hopefully in late twenty twenty three uh, for another six to twelve month review prompt, uh, period by the province. So at this point, we're tracking for late 2024 uh, for final approval of the plan, which will allow us to implement the um, necessary steps uh, to, 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 to take kick off that plan. Great, thank you. The next question is about uh, climate change and sewer conveyance plan. So it asks, what future impacts will climate change have on the future of the conveyance system? Maybe you can talk about how that's been considered uh, in the planning process. Sure. Yeah, so the, um, you know, as, as Russell highlighted, the, the LWMP planning process has been fairly extensive. Um, and so a key, a key part of that process was developing or establishing technical and public advisory committees um, formed of um, you know, all key stakeholders with interests overlapping that of the plan. Um, and early on in, in that process, uh, we undertook a kind of a, a brainstorming exercise, a facilitated brainstorming exercise to develop um, kind of the key criteria um, that all kind of options for implementing the plan would be um, evaluated by and, and one of the key criteria evaluated uh, er, early on in the process was um, resilience to climate change. Um, so it's very briefly, you know, subsequent process, we, we undertook a, a kind of a, a long listing of, of options to, to address each of the three main components that Russell highlighted. 
Um, and then those, those long lists of options were evaluated using those criteria, among which was um, resilience to climate change. So that's the kind of the first step in how um, the options that were considered throughout the plan were assessed on, on that basis. Um, so all of the, kind of the options that made it to the, to, to the final shortlisting and this preferred option um, you know, did so in part based on their, you know, their, their kind of rated resilience to climate change. So largely what that means for uh, the sewer system is, is um, the, the biggest risk by far is the risk from sea level rise, given that uh, typically pump, well, pump stations are always located at the lowest point to allow gravity collection of the wastewater. Um, so three of our pump stations are located you know, at sea level effectively. Uh, the Courtney Pump Station, the Comox First Nation, or Comox Pump Station, and the, the, um, the Jane Place Pump Station. Um, and then second, second to that would be the uh, just the impact of, of uh, the much higher um, kind of the the increased severity of extreme rain events that's predicted from climate change. So the ability of the system to handle the kind of the larger wet weather flows, which have such an impact on our kind of aging collection system. So the 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 the, the preferred solution, which we're now in the process of of implementing, um, we'll see our pump stations. Um, either rebuilt or upgraded to resist uh, or to, to be resilient to the impacts of, of sea level rise. And then the pipes and pumps are, are being sized to, to handle the projected peak wet weather flows that, uh, that we would see out to the end of the, um, the projected lifespan of, of the infrastructure. Thank you. The next question is about the alignment along Comox Road and the section where it moves off of Comox Road um, at the Courtney Pump Station. Um, is there an opportunity for any public amenities or improvements here through it, or is that all on private property? Um, maybe you can expand a little bit more about the location of that alignment as well. Sure, so if I understand the question correctly, we're talking about um, about the location where the pipe, where the alignment will leave the roadway and go to the the new Courtney pump station. That's how I understand it. Yeah, off of yeah. Comox Road through IR one there. Oh, through IR one. Oh, sorry, off of. Um, let me just share a screen of the. And for the person asking this question, please feel free to pop in if we've missed if I'm misinterpreting. I think it's this area here, where we're moving off of. Comox Road from okay. Courtney Pump Station. Sure. So, um, so the key driver, as as uh, Russell um, highlighted during his presentation, the key driver for moving that alignment off of Comox Road is the highly sensitive um, archaeological uh, areas along Comox Road proper on that alignment. Um, so the ship, so that's driven us into the agricultural land. A key, key a key element of the um, permitting kind of uh, kind of the, the application for um, installation of this line through the uh, within the agricultural land reserve is um, the ability to fully restore the um, the impacted land to its pre-existing condition to allow for continued agricultural use of that land. So our, our I believe that that constrains any ability for that alignment to 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 serve a, a public amenity. Purpose. So our intention is, is very much to fully restore that uh, that alignment to uh, to pre-existing condition to allow the the continued farm use of that land. Okay. Thank you. Um, the next question is about um, I believe it's a town of Comox project about the Rodello roundabout. Um, and the question is: Should construction of the Rodello roundabout be postponed until after the installation of the sewage conveyance system? Perhaps, Chris, this is part of your conversations with the town, ongoing conversations with the town. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Colleen. Are you able to pull up that slide that, um, that covers that area while I respond? So the, um, the, the CVRD is currently um, in discussions uh, with, the, with the town of Comox regarding um, the potential inclusion of, of some surface works. 
So at its the base scope for the project, obviously, is installation of the large diameter force main underground um, with restoration of the roadways above. Um, given the timing of the project um, and the significant impact on the on the town, um, there does appear to be you know, sort of strong rationale for co-delivery of some of these potential surface projects. So the Rodello roundabout it's poten could potentially be delivered as, as part of this project, um, which uh, which should help to. Um, Minimize, you know, kind of the overall impact of, of those two projects on the, the town of Comox residents and businesses. Great. Um, and then the next question is just revisiting the cost for the conveyance project. Can you um, talk about what the estimated cost is and then what that um, annual tax impact is for residents on the sewer service? Sure. So the, um, the current, the the um, updated capital cost estimate for the project is uh, eighty-two million dollars for the entire project, um, and, and the project is being delivered via two main contracts: um, a contract dedicated to the crossing of the town of Comox from the west side over to the east side, um, and then the so which is you know, roughly speaking about a third. Um, of the total project cost, and then the basically the remainder of the project, so everything outside of the town of Comox, with the exception of the Jane Place pump station, which will also be included in the second uh, component, and so that being roughly two thirds of the total project cost. Um, and overall, the project is anticipated to um, have a cost impact in the order of, of $150 per property um, within the sewer solely within the sewer service area. And then the next question is about um, access at Jane's, Jane Place during construction. Can you talk about how coordination is done in particular around emergency services? So the question here is um, ensuring firefighter access to Jane Place during construction. Um, can you speak to that, that stage of the planning process, Chris? Sure. Yeah, that's it. That's an that's an incredibly important uh, topic, um, and and clearly with that single access down to that neighborhood, this is a it, it will definitely be a, a, a bit of a of a choke point during construction. That being said, uh, we're committed to to working very closely and engaging early with the Jane Place residents, um, both relating to the upgrades happening at that pump station, but also. Um, regarding you know, mitigating any impacts from a traffic perspective. Well, fortunately, the section of, um, of disturbed roadway will be, you know, it's fairly short just from the pump station up to, to Beaufort. Um, and we will, we will be working to ensure um, access to emergency vehicles and to, to, to residents uh, throughout um, that, that construction period to, to avoid that impact. We have one more question in here. So if anybody has anything else that they want to add into the question and answer window, I encourage you to uh, pop in and, and add them now. Um, Chris, the question is asking about uh, the Lazo Marsh crossing. Can you give a bit more information or detail about uh, that crossing and how it'll be done when the time comes? Sure. That's, that's, a, that's an element um, that we're, we're still, it's still under development. Uh, so we've, we're working through um, an application for land tenure with the province for, for, that, for that crossing as it crosses the, um, well, crosses Crown land from, uh, from Moreland over to the, the treatment plant. Um, so we expect, you know, the, the, the basis of the application is that uh, the pipe will be installed, would be installed by a cut and cover. So, um, so surface installation of the pipe across that area. Um, so certainly an acknowledgement of the, the highly sensitive nature of that, uh, of that, of that section. Um, there will be a, a number of mitigating measures being taken, including obviously the type of the time of year that that work will be done. So at a time of year where the likely when the, um, that land is the, is the driest, um, but certainly in, in close collaboration with environmental firms. Um, and uh, so yeah, time, time of year, 
um, so the potential for some um, offsetting works you know, while we're in there with machinery, uh, the potential for um, for helping to you know to to improve the the habitat value of that area, and then obviously restoring the area immediately above for kind of the disturbed area to to the same or better condition than when we found it. Great, thank you. Um, so we have another question. It's not directly project related. So I'm just going to kind of put it forward, Chris. I'm not sure if you're the person or if somebody else might want to jump in uh, from the team. But the question is whether or not the CBRD has uh, some comment about the concerns uh, about the sewage um, plume in Bain Sound and impact on shellfish production in that area. I, I can comment on that, Colleen. Thank you, Russell. It, it is a matter that the regional district takes very seriously and has for a number of years. Um, there's been various initiatives undertaken to develop a means of uh, providing community sewage treatment to, to the areas of the regional district, including Union Bay, Royston, Kilmarnock. We are currently working on a plan and uh, consulting with the community on that, and we'll be going out to the public uh, uh, to, 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 to provide for them more details with the possibility of going to referendum in order to construct a, uh, a conveyance line and pump stations that would connect Union Bay, Royston and the communities surrounding to the Comox Valley uh, uh, sewage treatment facility on Red Road. So uh, there's been a lot of detailed work that's going on with that. Uh, we are consulting with the uh, communities as well as other interests of the province to, to ensure that the province might come and help and assist with the costs of uh, such such works because it definitely has a benefit to not only the local community, but the shellfish industry, the reputation of the Comox Valley. The shellfish industry there is, is a provincially significant industry and uh, we acknowledge and recognize that and seem to be getting quite a bit of support from the province on that. So um, the area is one of several that uh, has residents on septic systems. Uh, the regional district of Nanaimo as well, and I'm, I'm sure that they are concerned about it, and they they definitely have done planning in the past. Not, uh, you know, sewage and, and failing septic systems may not be the only cause of this, but certainly are one factor that uh, that uh, does affect the quality of water in Bain Sound, and it's definitely is a concern for us. Thank you. Um, so we've come to the end of the questions that have been posted so far. I'm just uh, going to give another opportunity for one to pop in, but just in the meantime, just share a screen as well um, where people with some contact information. So if people have any follow-up questions after today or want to be able to sign up for updates on the conveyance project as we move forward, you can go to this website or send an email or reach out by phone as well. Uh, one more has popped in, uh, so I will uh, give, leave that screen up for a moment while we address this one. So uh, the question is, will the odor standard being proposed sustain um, the standard when the plant is expanded uh, to handle all future projected volume? So I, I think that means the current standard of odor, um, odor standard, would it still be applied into the future uh, as the as the plant continues to grow? So for an answer, uh, yes. Um, so actually, um, we've just completed uh, the follow up odor study at the treatment plant, uh, following up on the completion of the final stage of odor improvements at the facility last year. Um, so that work has concluded that um, that the upgraded facility is performing as expected. Um, so prior to that work being done, a, um, a design limit for odor of five odor units had been had been set. Um, and then we'd flagged um, the need to complete the improvements and then complete the follow-up um, odor modeling after the work's done in order to um, then set a, a lower kind of operational limit for the facility. Um, so we actually, in the interim, we've started uh, work on a, a site master plan for that facility. And so we're holding off on setting that, um, that operational limit for odors until we've completed that site master plan for the, for the facility, which will happen kind of late summer. So we would expect to be um, coming back to the community or to the sewage commission and communicating with the community, uh, the community uh, kind of a final operational limit for odor at that point, and then yes, that that uh, that limit will be set um, to ensure that uh, that the facility will be able to meet that limit, um, you know, through the projected kind of upgrades which will be happening over the decades 
you know, to a horizon of at least 60 years from now. Great, thank you. Well, um, with that one, we have come to the end of the questions. Um, so unless I see another one pop up in the next moment or so, I will uh, say our thank yous, obviously to Russell and Chris and the team for being here to be able to provide that overview and answer questions that the folks had on the line today. Um, and of course, to all of you who joined us for this update, we appreciate it very much and your participation all the way through the process. Oh. Sorry, one more question that just popped in. Uh, the pub, a question just about public input to the sewage master plan. I know that we talked about that a little bit in the timeline, but wonder if kind of as our um, last one, we could just touch base on how how public input was collect, connect, connect, collected through the planning process. Thanks, Colleen. I, the way I interpret that question is looking at it, um, I think it's re in reference and in response to my, my mention of the, um, the uh, treatment plant site master ah, plan. Sure. Okay. Um, the LWMP. So, um, <laughs> so the LWMP obviously was, you know, very very uh, public engagement focused process. The site master plan is 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 not. It's a uh, it's a technical exercise for the treatment plant that um, will help guide, you know, where and, and when the upgrades will happen at, on at the facility. So it is, it is very much a technical exercise um, and uh, no public uh, engagement is anticipated uh, to that process other than um, potentially providing some uh, information at the end of the process in terms of the, the conclusions. Okay. okay, with that, um, thank you very much once again, everybody for being here today. We appreciate it very much. Um, and we hope to talk to you again soon um on a future update thank you everybody thanks everyone